later for today. Thank you, Jamie. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to today's Ticket to Work webinar, Choosing a Service Provider That's Right for You. As Jamie said, my name is Pat Van Nelson and I'm a member of the Ticket to Work team and I'll be your moderator today. On behalf of Social Security and the entire Ticket team, thank you for joining us to learn about the Ticket program and the many types of service providers that you can call upon to help you as you start or expand your path to financial independence through work. We'll be providing some practical information about how you can decide which provider might be best for you, wherever you are on your path. And we'll also show you how to find them. I think one of the best things about Social Security's program is that the ticket program recognizes that we're each unique individuals and every one of us creates our own path. Today, our hope is that we can provide you with information that will help you create yours. So let's get started. We want to make sure that you get the most out of today's presentation. So we've got a few tips for using this webinar platform. First, there's the audio. You can manage your audio using the audio option at the top of your screen. The audio option is an icon. It looks like a microphone or telephone. When you click on it, there's a drop down menu. Choose select speaker from the menu options as noted in the speaker image on the screen now. Just a reminder, everyone attending will be muted during the webinar, except for me, of course, and then of course our speaker. When it asks how you want to join the meeting's audio, pick device speaker if you want the sound to come through your computer. And of course, be sure to make sure your speakers are turned up or plug in your headphones. If you'd rather listen by phone, you can dial 1-800-832-0736 and enter an access code 4189148 and then the pound sign. You can also join the meeting audio to receive a phone call, as you'll see in the image on the screen, and enter that same number and access code. All right, now let's move to cover some information about the webinar's accessibility. On the Adobe Connect platform, you'll notice several different boxes on your screen. These boxes are called pods. We have the presentation pod, and this is where the slide deck appears. And of course, that's the biggest one. Below that's an open space where we put the closed captioning. Top right corner is the Q&A pod, and below that's the web links pod. And we'll talk a little bit more about those pods in a bit. But first, we want to make sure we cover the accessibility. If you need assistance navigating this Adobe Connect, an accessibility user guide has a list of controls available, and it's on the website at http colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash Adobe hyphen accessibility. A link to the Adobe Accessibility User Guide is also available in the web links pod on the bottom right of your screen. It's called Adobe Accessibility User Guide. So if you want that one, you can go into the web links pod and access it now. Real-time captioning is available and it's active and you should see it in the captioning pod below the slides. You can show it or you can hide it and you can choose the text size and text color combinations as best meets your own vision. You can open closed captioning by selecting the CC option at the top of the menu bar. The captioning link can also be accessed in the web links pod under the title web captioning. You can also access captioning online in a separate viewing window. Choice is up to you and how you want to look at it. If you're fluent in American Sign Language and you'd like support during today's webinar, please follow the link that provides instructions on how to connect with an interpreter through the Federal Communications Commission's video relay service. The ASL user guide is available in the web links pod too under the title ASL user guide. We're going to be pausing for questions at two different points throughout the webinar. So please send your questions to us at any time during the webinar. Just type them into the Q&A pod. I'll direct the questions to our presenter during the Q&A portions of the webinar. 
I'm going to try to do my best to get to as many as possible. If you're listening by phone and you're not logged into this webinar platform, you can ask your questions by sending an email to webinars at choosework.ssa.gov. Another useful item in this web links pod that I've been mentioning it has the links for the resources we'll cover today. Just select the ones that interest you to learn more. If you're listening by phone, you can email us at webinars at choosework.ssa.gov for a list of those available resources. You can also look at your confirmation email for today's webinar to access those resources. Just a reminder, Social Security can't guarantee and isn't responsible for the accessibility of external websites if you happen to go to one of those. We're recording today's webinar and we'll post it within two weeks on the Choose Work website and that's https colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash wise underscore on demand. This link can also be found in the web links pod called Wise Webinar Archives. We sure hope that you have a good experience during this webinar and that your technology cooperates. However, if you do run into technical difficulties, just use the Q&A pod to send us a message or use that same address webinars at choosework.ssa.gov and our team will help you. As today's moderator, I have the pleasure of introducing my colleague on the team, Derek Shields. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Derek has a master's degree in management and disability services from the University of San Francisco and has spent the past 25 years in the areas of disability inclusion, employment, and accessibility. In addition to his work on the ticket program, Derek is also president of Forward Works Consulting and is a co-founder and current board advisor of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. During today's webinar, Derek's going to cover the Ticket Work program, the many service providers that are available to you, how to choose among them, and finally, how to locate and find them. I hope what you take away from this session is a better understanding of the Ticket to Work program, who's eligible, and how to use your ticket. We'll introduce the different types of service providers and provide you with resources so you can choose a service provider to help you meet your own employment goals. I'll be back with you during the Q&A session, so remember to put your questions in that Q&A pod. It's now my pleasure to turn the microphone over to Derek. This is Derek speaking. Pat, thank you very much for setting the, the stage for today's webinar and for your generous introduction. It's uh, wonderful be, to be back with everyone for this month's webinar and we're going to get started uh, with the ticket program as past, Pat said and really focusing on supporting your path to work. All of our sessions talk about it because we really want to help you in support in, the, uh, in your path to work to become independent of your benefits. Um, we do have a lot of content today, so I'm going to jump right in. And we like to start out by covering the two Social Security Disability Benefits programs. Um, they're significant because, you know, you have to be involved with those to participate uh, in the ticket program, and we need to understand what they are. Um, so we have Social Security Disability Insurance, the first one, called SSDI. And just note there, we're, this is a disability insurance program. Um, and this is something that people have been paying into or could be paying into while working. And if you have worked and you've noticed FICA taxes being withheld from your paycheck, that's what is being used to fund disability insurance benefits. And, and so your amount of benefits that goes into this depends on really things like how long you've worked or perhaps how much you've earned. Those are two significant things to think of. And there, there is a maximum to this amount and it is important to note that everyone's benefit for their disability insurance is going to be different. Um, like if you've had a, a longer history of work, maybe sometimes um, up to 10 years to become insured, um, and this varies, but with SSDI, recall that's insurance, and 
when you've worked in the past, you pay into the program. And with SSDI, we're not really focused on your resources. We're not focused on, you know, unearned income that you may have because that's the insurance program you're paying into it. Now we can contrast that with the second one listed here, Supplemental Security Income or SSI. Notice it doesn't say insurance. So in this program, this is a needs-based program provided by Social Security to people who have not worked enough to be insured for the disability insurance program or they don't have a work history at all. So many folks have had a disability and not been able to work so they could qualify for SSI. And that's very, very different. It's also going to look to see if you have a very low resource amount or income amount. Social Security administers the SSI program as well and pays those monthly benefits to people with limited income and resources who are either blind or have a qualifying disability. And that's important. It's also important to note that it is available, SSI, to people who are 65 or older or are children with disabilities or who are blind because they can also get SSI. So we have the two benefits programs and it's important to know what they are and of course which one or ones you might have. So with that in mind you would say I'm not exactly sure how could I find out and we have a couple ways for you to do that. Um, you know so before you approach your employment team you would want to have this information um, and on this side we talk to you about how to sign up for a my social security account um, this is one way that you can find out about your benefits so you can look at one of these accounts they they're called my ssa accounts i'll say that again my ssa standing for social security uh, these accounts have to be set up on the social security website and they're going to ask you for some personal information, like when you sign up for other accounts. But I want to assure you that this is a safe and protected space to sign up. Um, I've done the process, uh, and you know they have government um, security measures on the website to protect that process. What will also happen um, when you know you do that? It's going to give you a long information list about your work history. It's going to tell you if you're eligible for Social Security disability insurance, how much you will receive, you know, if you've been putting into the fund through work in the past, and it will tell you how much your family members will actually receive if you have dependents. Uh, I look at mine from time to time. I looked at it last month. I logged into my SSA account online and I read my Social Security statement. Some of you might recall you know, receiving that in the past in the mail. Um, you know, I can look at mine online and it has my projected disability um, uh, benefits through disability insurance and projected survivor benefits. And I also saw eligibility for benefit status. So this is important, you know, on the SSI side, it would clarify that your benefits are SSI and how much those benefits would be for you. So all of that information is really good to have in advance of you know, taking this path to work and engaging this employment team that we're going to be talking about, especially the benefits planners that are on that team. So if you don't have one of these accounts, I highly recommend it. Sign up for a MySSA account and you can do an internet search for that um, or go to ssa.gov forward slash my account. There's a lot of great information there. Um, to explore and you know if, if that isn't for you you could also find out some of this information through our helpline and I'm going to cover how to do that uh, in a little bit okay so we've covered the two benefit programs and we talked about how to check on that through the my SSA account um, you know let's now turn to starting this journey and Pat mentioned this that, you know you need to make the right choice for you um, and that's what's really wonderful about the flexibility in kind of when you start, how you start, and who you choose to work with uh, to plan and go along your your roadmap to work. 
and your entire employment team is here to really help guide that process by giving you the right information with the right projections at the right time. And we hope that you will really be able to project what will happen before it happens on this journey to, to work. So speaking of work, you know, we asked the question of why choose work? And, you know, in short, in short a good mantra or, or theme can be work works. We say this often, but it really does work for people. It helps people get out of poverty. It helps people really have the ability to make choices for themselves. You know, you could have more flexibility in life. You have more choice if you're working and earning more when that rises above your benefits. Um, and you may have that extra money to do the things that you want. Um, and that allows you some flexibility outside of work. So earning a living through employment is something everybody can do. And these programs, the Ticket to Work program and the other work incentives we'll talk about, um, will afford you the flexibilities to find a way if work is the choice for you. Um, you know, there is a, a disability standard that's out there and it's a tough one. Um, but when you do uh, look at the opportunity of earning a living through employment um, and considering these free services and supports that are available, you may believe that all of the rewards of working will outweigh the risks. And we know through many of our success stories that that is the case. And so we hope when you consider this journey to work, you can think about the success stories of those that have used the ticket program prior and think about how you can benefit from it as well. So let's now talk about the Ticket to Work program itself. Um, you know, the Ticket program is free and voluntary. Notice that we bold this word voluntary. You don't, this is completely your choice. You don't need to participate or have to participate. Um, and you know, you do not need the ticket to make use of the work incentives that Social Security has either. Um, we do care to be eligible that the career development services and supports are for people that are age 18 through 64 who received the Social Security disability benefits that we covered first and really want to work. So you have to have that end goal as well. And if you want to work, you can get these um, voluntary support services um, and uh, start to map out uh, your pathway. And if that sounds like something that matches what you want to do, we have some really important career development offerings that you should consider. Continuing on the ticket program, getting into a little bit more detail about the services and supports that we talk about as employment services. You know, if you choose this is right for you, um, you know, we're going to need a little bit of information to help craft kind of how to move forward. But if, if you've decided that working is the choice for you, you know, you want to join the workforce and you want to realize the benefits of employment from um, offering, you know, your skills and services to an organization, perhaps joining a team to make a contribution to an organization's mission that matters to you, um, then it's really taking those next steps. So when we think about preparing for work, you know, you might need to consider, consider some training or education that would help prepare you. Um, the ticket program can do that. And then when you come to, you know, once you're prepared to, for the next step, and finding a job, then you have to think about, uh, well, what are the steps out there to explore where there are openings that will work for me? And how can I ensure that when I do go to interview that I've, I'm ready for that? Some of us, if you haven't worked for a little while, perhaps, you know, you need some preparation assistance with the resume and the interview prep um, and all those things can help. And a lot of these service providers have great connections to employers that can match um, their need for talent like you. 
So you can think about that as well. And then at the end, of course, succeeding at work. That's an important one. Um, we want to make sure that uh, you, you kind of begin with the end in mind and that if it is going to be a pathway to work, that that full-time employment that is allowing you to access the benefits of work, um, the employment team has helped you um, access the job and support you moving forward with perhaps a little, you know, on-the-job coaching. It can be um, there to, to tell you about kind of like, well, yeah, there's a way to do your task, but then there's other ways to perhaps communicate with supervisors and do the things that allow you to retain your position and succeed at work. The ticket program is designed to do these four things and is something that we really want you to consider as one of our uh, offerings. And of course, we'll talk about how the employment team comes in support of the ticket program as well. Um, okay, you know, I've been providing a lot of information and about, uh, you know, the ticket program and understanding um, ways to check on your benefits through the MySSA account. Um, I want to tell you, if this gets at some point to be a lot of information today, um, one of the things that we recommend you do is to contact the Ticket to Work helpline. So the ticket program offers this toll-free helpline to support you on your journey. So if that's figuring out, well, what did Derek say in the WISE webinar about my SSI benefits? Um, do I qualify? Um, I have a question about the employment team. All of these questions can be brought to the helpline's attention and the beneficiary support specialists that are there Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So you could reach out to them. The number is 1-866-968-7842. And if you are a TTY user, the number is 1-866-833-2967. It is important to remember that this helpline is designed for uh, the ticket program. It's not associated with the Social Security Administration's more general toll-free 1-800 number. But if you have ticket program related questions, go ahead and reach out. They can answer those questions and help connect you with your employment team um, at any point. Okay, speaking of your employment team, obviously that's our focus today. So now we're going to move into the second section of our content and focus on uh, the members of your employment team. Who can help you achieve your work goals? Well, through the ticket program, you'll have an access, um, you'll have access to a variety of these partners, your service providers or partners on your path to work. And they include a variety of different ones, and we're going to cover five of them in detail today. Um, so we have employment networks, and we call those EN or ENs. And then we have the Workforce System Employment Networks. We'll go into a little bit more detail on those. We have your state vocational rehabilitation agencies. I'm sure many of you are familiar with those uh, VR partners. And then we have the benefits counselors coming through the Work Incentives Planning and Assistance Projects, or the WIPA projects. And last, we have the Protection and Advocacy for Beneficiaries of Social Security. These are organizations, we call them the PABs, um, and they each have an icon here on the bottom of the screen. We point those icons out, triangles of different colors, a circle and a diamond. They are also on the Choose Work website, and they're on some fact sheets. So you'll see these and you might get familiar with them. So we have these five different entities, and we're going to go through each of them right now. The first one is the EN, or the Employment Network. Um, an EN is a private or public organization that has an agreement with Social Security to provide free employment support services to people who are eligible for the ticket program. When you think back about that eligibility, we talked about you know receiving Social Security benefits, SSDI or SSI, and uh, between the ages of 18 and 64. So keep those in, that in mind. Um, we also have, you know, the 
your, your more traditional employment network is a, a, a service provider. It could be a nonprofit organ, <clears throat> excuse me, nonprofit organization, or a for-profit organization. Um, we also have um, the workforce ENs, and those I mentioned before, they are part of the state public workforce system. That includes things like American Job Centers. And this comes out of the U.S. Department of Labor and their approach to support with training and other uh, workforce preparedness and readiness. So we have ENs and, and workforce ENs. It's important to know that they're all across the country and you can have them um, in uh, covering an entire state or some might be a, like a zip code area. Um, and then others serve the entire country. And really the choice is yours if you want some, you know, if you're living in, in the state of Maryland, do you prefer somebody that's in your neighborhood? Or it doesn't matter if they're in Denver, like they can serve you virtually. Um, th but that choice is yours. And we're going to talk about how to use our tools and our helpline a little bit later in the process of choosing the right provider for you. Um, but keep that in mind. It's also important to know that you know this. You don't need to pay for the tickets. You just call the helpline, or you look up online, and you can find out from those ENs uh, if you qualify, and then you can start to tap into kind of what they offer. Um, on the next slide on ENs, it covers um, the the area. I mentioned Maryland or, or, or national. So that there is a local community or a statewide approach. And then some ENs cover multiple states, kind of more of a regional approach. And then we have national ENs that actually serve any ticket eligible individuals across the whole country. Um, and you could approach these in person, virtually, and we could do that by, by telephone or email. And then there's some that do both. So maybe you start out by going in person and then you end up, you know, for um, ongoing service doing more virtually. So there's a lot of flexibility here when you're looking at an EN and it's just trying to figure out, you know, what's your personality type? What do you prefer and what works best um, uh, in many ways? When we speak about the services, those employment support services and supports um, that ENs can help you with. On this slide, we focus a little bit more about what's designed to help you on the path to financial independence. And so we have five services and supports areas that are really important for the employment network. So if you're thinking about, I want to reach out to employment network, but what am I actually going to do with them? These are the types of things that you should consider. Uh, the first one is important, you know, identification of your work goals. You know, if you're returning to a career after perhaps acquiring a disability, you know, you might be deciding, um, well, how do I re-enter the workforce? And it's been a little bit of time and, you know, things have changed. Technology has changed our business model. So I have to think about transitioning my role or I want to get back to where I was. Or maybe there's some of you that are considering work for the first time. And if you have an interest in a field, like you've always had an aspiration to be in a specific field and have that job and career, um, then you can work with the EN around that. Maybe it's a customer service or customer experience role, uh, or perhaps it's a non-office job and you prefer to have like a trade skill. Those choices are yours and the EN will help you in identifying those work goals mentioned before, you know, writing and reviewing a resume. It's important if you haven't been, you know, doing that for a little while. Um, the EN could help you. Well, what do I do with that time gap? What's the strategy to, you know, include experiences I've gained from perhaps school or community service and portray that in a way that shows skills that the employer could, could want. Uh, preparation for interviews, we mentioned before um, requesting reasonable accommodations. You know, if you're if you have a disability and you're trying to figure out, well, which part of this should I disclose in an interview 
or during an onboarding process, um, the EN can work with you around, you know, what you choose to do. In, in effect, if you need a reasonable accommodation to do an essential job function, a task, you may disclose some of your disability to request that reasonable accommodation. But then there's other disability elements or identities that you may choose not to. That choice, again, is yours, and the EN can be a great partner in thinking that through. Uh, and the last one is benefits counseling. And some ENs have certified benefits counselors that you can talk to, or they would refer those uh, to, um, uh, organizations to you, and we'll talk about those organizations quite soon. So next, let's move to the second service provider that is part of your employment team, and that's the State Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. Uh, the VR agency provides a wide variety of services to help people with disabilities return to work or enter new lines of work, or as we've mentioned, enter the workforce perhaps for the first time. Um, and they can also offer benefits counseling uh, and so, and maybe some of you have received that from state VR agencies. Um, there's a wide variety of services that's available through the VR agencies. So if you're kind of thinking about, well, you know, I suppose like, what if I want to do something different now? Um, you can, you know, tap into the state VR agency to make a path, you know, through vocational rehabilitation or training and education that would prepare you for that um, new possibility. Um, and a person you know, might need to learn different things to do jobs differently because of the disability. And the state VR agency is a fantastic resource to help with that along with the benefits planning. Um, and when it comes to that training and education itself, you know, if you have, um, a certain level of education, but you're looking at a career track where your destination, really the, the work goal, would be a position that required an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. Um, you may need to go through, you know, some further education to acquire that, and the state VR agency could help, you know, create a plan to do that, tell you if you qualify, and then help implement that that plan to acquire that education. So it is important to remember that VR agencies look different in each state, um, but they are available in each state. Um, some states um, have two agencies, um, a VR agency for individuals who are blind or visually impaired, and then another agency for all other qualifying disabilities. So you can find them online. We're going to show you a little bit later how to do that. OK, let's move to the third um, service provider in the employment team now. These are the Work Incentives Planning and Assistance Projects. Um, these are what we call WIPAs. If you haven't heard of them, um, people call them WIPAs. And um, they're staffed by um, professionals who have been trained in this field uh, and certified. We call them Community Work Incentives Coordinators, another acronym for you, CWICs. Um, and these folks provide uh, free benefits counseling to eligible Social Security disability beneficiaries. You know, that's, you know, the folks receiving SSDI and SSI like we talked about. Um, they're also able to talk about all of the other benefits like the impact on Medicare, Medicaid. We talked about that in a recent WISE webinar that's now in our on-demand area, if you're interested. The, the WIPA and the, the CWICs that work for them will help you understand all of the work incentives. If you're not familiar with them, there's over 20 of the work incentives. We'll cover a little bit of that today, but um, really the the work incentives information is accessible online, and you can d dive more deeply into it. Um, and when the time is right, you could talk to a WIPA about which one, which ones the work incentives could be right for you. Um, so that's important to know. Um, they will also explain the potential benefits of employment 
and help dispel these myths. And there are myths, they're long-standing myths about, um, you know, kind of the inability to go to work and keep um, access to health care benefits. And, you know, it isn't correct. And the benefits counselors can talk to you about how uh, to bust those myths to say, you know, well, if you have work goals, this would be the impact of income on your work and the length of time. And in some cases, we're talking seven to nine years that you could keep access to health care benefits and still work before ever fully transitioning off of these benefit programs and moving to like an employer option. So WIPAs are great to dispel those myths and would do so in a way that gives you kind of less, um, less nerves in making your decision and knowing that you can go down the path to achieve your, your goals and aspirations and live the life you want to including work and a career. So it's important. WIPAs help you decide if the ticket program and those services and supports can be right for you. And those benefits planners, those CWICs, can really be great team members on your employment team. All right, I mentioned the work incentives. Um, and these make it possible for you to work and still receive benefits. So they're really important to understand um, how many and what kind out of these over 20 work incentives you can use really depends on you know who you are and the type of benefits you're receiving uh, and so you know it's important to explore them you know today we talk about you know they could include keeping your medicare or medicaid having access to these individualized supports uh, and services as well and keeping some or all of your benefits payments as you transition to work um, the issue around the work incentives is that um, you know there's a lot of variation in them. So we asked the WIPAs um, and some of our printed materials and those ENs that have the benefits counselors that are certified by SSA to assist you in navigating those work incentives. So they are a very key team member uh, on your employment team and we encourage you to explore uh, the work incentives with the support of the WIPA programs. Um, it is important to also know who the WIPA projects can serve. So when you think about um, when is the right time to approach different employment team members, this is um, kind of a, a, some good information for you to, to consider. Uh, right now, the WIPA projects serve people who are currently working or currently self-employed, people who have a job offer pending, um, like you've been offered a job and you're kind of waiting to start phase, uh, and people who are actively interviewing for jobs. So that would mean, you know, if you've had an interview uh, scheduled in the next couple of weeks or you had an interview in the past 30 days. So it's important to think about the right timing to approach the WIPAs for benefits, planning, and counseling assistance. You have to be working or self-employed, have a job offer pending, or actively interviewing based on these definitions. Um, if that is you and you're really interested on the impact of work uh, on your benefits, then you can reach out to the Ticket to Work helpline and they will refer you to a WIPA project um, if you qualify, you know, you're receiving SSDI or SSDI related Medicare, SSI or SSI related Medicaid. So it's important. There is another group, though, that can be served by WIPAs right now. And it's important if you're on, you know, listening to the webinar and you're focused on age 14 to 25. This is the earliest stages of considering work, but these uh, young adults or youth uh, in transition to work are eligible for WIPA services as well. So something to keep in mind. Okay, and on to our final service provider as part of the employment team. This group is called the Protection and Advocacy for Beneficiaries of Social Security or PABS. 
another acronym for you. The PABS organizations provide free legal assistance to people who receive Social Security disability benefits and who have disability related employment issues. And disability re related employment issues are around these specific areas of legal support, advocacy, and resolving employment related concerns with employers. You know, so if you're a beneficiary and you're um, trying to resolve something with an employer uh, or Social Security or these other service providers that we've talked about, then uh, the PABS is, as our colleague says, the legal wing of the project. And I think when you think of the PABS, you know, you can think about this like, well, you know, legal support and advocacy and employment related concerns. Um, you know, the PAB services can help with protecting your rights. And sometimes it's hard for us to know, well, what are my exact employment rights? Um, it seems like maybe something isn't quite right here. Then you could get legal advice about your rights. Um, and specifically, you know, if you're trying to figure out how to advocate for a reasonable accommodation, they could talk about, yes, this is your legal right to request a reasonable accommodation you know, for a class or f with an employer. Um, but they could also talk to you about how to advocate for yourself for those rights and for reasonable accommodation in a way that maybe it becomes less of a, a you know, a contentious situation, one where there isn't the employee and the employer working together, but they, they find a mutual path to an outcome and the PABs could help kind of train you on that. And the last one is addressing other disability-based legal issues that are barriers to employment. And again, here, this is where perhaps there's a level of discrimination and the PABs could help you understand that and give you legal advice um, over what to do in that situation. So they round out the employment team and really frame um, that your path to success could be um, designed with five service providers as your employment team partners. And I think when we talk about our path to financial independence through work, when everyone's path is different, is different, it's really important to have that team to pull in at the right time when you need advice on making the next choice. And so then you can forecast, well, I'm, I have a, a, a crew around me that's going to help me achieve my dreams. So once you do decide uh, to, to pursue it, you know, the, the providers can help you create the plan, understand your responsibility in implementing the plan around reporting work and earnings, and then help you stick to your plan. And remember, if the choice was yours in designing the plan, then the outcome, the celebration of that would be uh, success work, earnings, and the benefits of employment that uh, the plan that you created designed. So a lot of possibility there uh, from your employment team. Um, and with that, what I'd like to do now is um, move to our first question break and ask Pat to come back in to see what kind of questions have come up so far. Pat? Thanks, Derek. We do indeed have some questions. When you were talking about um, the difference between SSI and SSDI, you mentioned using the My SSA account, but is there any other way to find out which one of the benefits that I have? Yeah, this is Derek. Thanks, Pat. It is a good question. It's a common question. And I think it's important, you know, the helpline is there really as a a great option. So you do have options and the Ticket to Work helpline um, might be the preferred option for a lot of folks. And, you know, I mentioned the number, I'll repeat it. The helpline is at 1-866-968-7842 or TTY 1-866-833-2967. Um, the helpline or the My SSA account, you can verify your eligibility with SSI or SSDI, you know, whether you're receiving um, one or both through either method. So, and I encourage you, the beneficiary support specialists at the helpline, they're going to explain to you also how the program works, um, you know, 
if you're not sure about an employment team member that I just reviewed one of the five the beneficiary support specialist will help you kind of review those options and even provide you a list of uh, service providers that are tailored to your requirements um, and then the last one you know you can also go on the find help tool um, and you know from there and we're going to talk about that a little later but yeah S my SSA account or the helpline and you're going to get benefits verification either way oh okay thanks and so if I understand correctly if I'm on SSI or SSDI doesn't matter I can still join the ticket program so let me just hear that this is Derek so it doesn't matter um, you just have to be eligible so um, if I understand the question right you have to be a social security disability beneficiary receiving one of the, the benefits that we covered and between the age of 18 and 64 so or you could be receiving both benefits SSI and SSDI for some folks but the key really is, um, you know, being a recipient of Social Security disability benefits and being between the age of 18 to 64. And that way, you can tap into the ticket program and the other work incentives. Got it. Thank you. Another question for you, Derek, is do I need to use the ticket program to find work? I mean, what if I find a job that I'd like? Can I just apply to it? This is Derek. You know, it's a great question. You know, this is all voluntary, and we remember that word was in bold. Um, so you don't need to use the ticket program to find work. You know, if you find a job that's out there and you want to apply for it, um, that choice is yours, and you can apply for it. I think what we care about is you understanding when you do make that commitment to apply, the impact work and earnings will have on your benefits so the one of the keys about using the ticket and really using your employment team is that working together they're going to help you navigate a transition um, into work away from benefits and over a long period of time you, you know you would understand how to transition off of benefits it is possible to do this without the employment team so really to the answer you can apply to a job and find work on your own um, so something to consider again if you're uncertain about that the helpline is a great resource to talk to a beneficiary support specialist and really navigate well what's the right decision for you should i use the ticket program or you know should i go the other direction thanks derek i've never had a job can the ticket program help me? That was one of our questions. Well, um, thanks, Pat. This is Derek. I think it's a good question. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who haven't been able to work yet. And if you're one of those people that are with us today, you know, the ticket program and the other employment providers that we covered in the last section can definitely help you. I, like, just because you haven't worked before doesn't mean you can't. And it's really up to you what you can do. And I think, you know, the ticket program is designed to include you. And so think about, you know, you can call the helpline or we'll go through how to use our website to find an employment network. Um, but I would encourage you to explore a conversation with them. If you are mapping out your first work goals, they would be able to assist you really with, you know, that process. Maybe you've never had a chance to have that discussion for the first time. What are things you're good at? What have you always dreamed about doing? And how could we find a bridge between those skill sets and the careers or jobs that are in those things that you want to do and then make a pathway to get there? The ticket program is definitely designed to help you if you're considering work for the first time. Thanks, Derek. Pat again. Uh, question. You listed a lot of providers. How do I know which one I should pick? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I, you know, this is Derek. I I think that we understand um, best by 
engaging with the ones at the time um, that they feel right. And so if you heard a description today about an employment network or maybe vocational um, rehabilitation or training and education with VR, and there was something about it that was like, that seems like where I'm at, then we would suggest that's where you would start. Like there's not only one way to start. Everyone's path is a little different and we want you to feel comfortable in starting at a place on your journey that feels right. Um, so um, my recommendation would be um, if you had a, a feeling that that one's right, then to try that first. Um, if you don't know where to start, we recommend you start with the Ticket to Work helpline because the beneficiary support specialist, listen to that name, they're there to support you. And so if your question is, where should I start? They're going to ask you a few, uh, I don't know, second level questions to try to get to know your situation a little bit better. And then they'll make a recommendation. And if that sounds right to you, then you would go to that member of the employment team. If you're not able to talk to a benefits planner because you're not you know, qualifying, you're not working or you're not interviewing, you know, or 18 to 25, then that's it's probably not the place to try to go. It's probably better to try to um, look to a state vocational rehabilitation agency, an employment network, or a workforce employment network, and begin there. Um, Pat, I don't, you know, hopefully that helps, but um, the key there is there's a lot of flexibility, and the flexibility is designed to meet the uh, beneficiary where they are. Thanks, Derek. Uh, I'm working with a VR now. Can I work with an EN too? Hey, uh, this is Derek. That's a good question. Uh, again, I and it is one I've heard before. You can. So the answer is yes, but they're really not designed to work with at the same time. It's more common that somebody will work with a state VR agency and receive let's call it the training and education services. And then when there's a, what they call a case closure, you know, your, your services will be done at the VR. And if you are in the ticket program and the VR agency, you know, even had your ticket assigned, then that would be closed. But the VR program can then in effect have a handoff for um, what we would look at as consecutive services to an EN, and then you would get the benefits of both. So not at the same time, but you could get training education services through VR, kind of change your knowledge base, build new skill sets, and then transition over to an employment network and get more of those work goals, um, more of the resume building and interview prep, or importantly, if you are working, those ongoing supports. And those are the things that ensure we keep the job. So VR can help you get ready. The EN perhaps could help placement and help you retain your employment. Thanks, Derek. I think we probably need to move on to the next part of your presentation. I just want to remind folks that we'll have another Q&A session in a bit. So keep those questions coming. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Pat. All right, so next, I um, appreciate the questions. I um, I hope um, everyone's getting something out of this. And now we're going to move into an, a, se a section called choosing the service provider. And, you know, we've talked about the five employment team uh, uh, members, the different service providers. Um, I think what we need to come up with now is, well, how do we choose the right one? And we were getting at that a little bit with some of the questions. So hopefully some of these answers will assist you. Um, I, it's important, you know, the choice is yours, but it's also, um, you know, you can, in effect, look around to the service providers and ask questions um, to find what's the right match. So, you know, if you're reaching out to a service provider, like, do you serve others who have the same disability? This could be really important if you need some customized support and they don't have experience with your disability. Um, as a segment, perhaps serving individuals who um, have uh, a hearing impairment or individuals who have intellectual disabilities. 
there's a wide range and you want to have confidence in your provider with who you are from a disability identity and experience. That's a good one. The next one, you know, what types of jobs have you found for other people with similar experience or skill sets? You know, here you're interviewing your service provider to make sure they're going to be able to, you know, get you a type of job. If you want to be uh, in the entertainment industry and, uh, you know, you've had some, you know, theater training and you went to an employment network that doesn't have any relationships with jobs that are in that sector, then you would be like, you know, this might not be the right place for me. However, if you went there and you asked them, you know, have you had luck in placing people in the entertainment industry, specifically in, you know, these types of positions, including uh, you know, some acting roles, and it was a match, then you'd say, this is the right place for me. Um, and, you know, I think the other two that are here is Hi again, everyone. This is Jamie. We are just going to go ahead and uh, try and get Derek reconnected. We'll be with you in just I just got, uh, hi everyone, I'm back. I had a complete internet outage for about a minute. I want to confirm that captioning can hear me and can Jamie confirm that I can be heard? It's Jamie, yes, Derek, we can hear you. And Thank yes, you. captioning I, can hear you as well. My apologies, I will proceed. Um, Next, what services do you need to achieve your work goals? I mean, this is another section of like when you want to figure out you know, the right employment network or the right service provider. So, you know, what services are you really focused on? We've talked about them, resume writing, interview skills, and benefits counseling. These are important that will take you in a different direction. Um, and importantly, thinking about the why you're looking for these services. I'm at this point in my path and I need this support in order for me to really get to the next part of my employment journey. And then the service provider should be able to say how they would help you in that step or next activity on your path to achieve your work goals. And so when you do, in effect, interview the, the service providers, you can use um, these question sets to help you explore. 
and they're important to keep in mind as you're mapping out you know your own path on this next slide we have some questions uh, to also keep in mind um, to ask yourself not asking others but you know kind of to have an internal gauge um, you know after you talk to a service provider you know did they seem friendly are they really going to be flexible and willing to work to achieve your goals in the way that you need to or was it a more rigid model um, you know you have this in, in choice of your team and you need to make sure that it's a good match from your perspective um, some ENs or state VR agencies um, provide a, a broad a list of services and supports uh, that's a, a menu that would meet your needs and a service provider may not provide all the services that you're really seeking so it's important to to explore that along with if the service provider you know compares well with others um, in effect you could make a, a bit of a checklist that says you know these are the five most important things that i'm looking for and i'm going to talk to three service providers and then i'm going to look at my notes and rate them and that would help you have confidence well this is the right direction for me to go in um, and the last one is you know do you know anyone who's worked with the service provider um, sometimes service providers can put testimonials on their website um, and you can read about those other individuals and their experiences um, or if you're working with a more local one perhaps you know you have somebody in your local network that could refer you a, a family member or a friend because they had a positive experience there and these are important things to keep in mind when you're trying to filter through you know which service provider is right for me at this point of my path to work all right next uh, we've learned a lot about the employment team um, we've talked about how you would select a service provider um, now we'd like to explore how to find the right one uh, and if you're ready to find one you know we encourage you to do that and we have a few ways to do it uh, on this screen we have uh, the recommendation to visit our website choosework.ssa.gov forward slash find help um, and at the at this site you can search the website um, through a variety of options and um, you know this starts with zip code so you can think you know in your backyard what's close to me um, you can also look at the types of services that are offered you know I mentioned also disability type uh, you could look at languages if you're looking for you know options outside of English delivery um, and you can also of course select the provider type and here we have the five providers we covered today ENs workforce ENs VRs WIPAs or PABs and again we have this image of the map with the different uh, icons there representing each one so that's the find help um, online process or if that's not for you you know we have helpline representatives that are available if the internet isn't your thing we encourage you to call the ticket to work helpline and you can get a list of service providers um, and that number is listed here at 1-866-968-7842 or for TTY 1-866-833-2967 and those beneficiary support specialists are available again Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. it's a great option for figuring out how to you know what what, what service providers um, are available based on the criteria that I provide uh, what we wanted to do today is something a little different we wanted to walk through um, a couple different ways online that you could explore um, this um, find help tool so if you go to that website that I just gave you know you get to this find help tool and there's two ways to search for service providers um, and the first one is a guided search and this is where there's a series of questions you respond to that uh, help you determine in effect um, what we'll call program readiness you know and it provides a list of uh, service providers from the team that might be a good fit if you aren't sure what you need the guided search is a great option to use because it asks questions to kind of lead you to um, frame what would be the right 
organization. So that, you know, Pat asked the question during our break, um, you know, what happens if I don't know where to go? You could take the guided search at the find help tool and that might help you kind of better frame what you're doing. So that's an option. There's also the second option at the find help tool and that is the direct search option. Um, do you know what service you want? Uh, if you want to start contacting an EN, uh, then you could uh, click on that website selecting uh, where your search is going to give you only ENs and then you could look by zip code and you know, or disability type and just really um, go directly to the contact you want because those results get narrowed down uh, by the check marks by the categories in different expertise areas that you select. And so what we want to do now is to um, review an example of how the search process works if you use direct search on the find help tool. So on this next slide we want to introduce you to Ben. Ben is our um, uh, beneficiary and he is from uh, Jackson Heights, New York. And so Ben is actually in a zip code that we're going to use in our direct search um, so he's looking for a local service provider in the Jackson Heights area um, and he wants to meet someone in person for that service provider that can help him prepare for his job hunt and he wants um, someone that can understand his needs is somebody that has a mental impairment. So these are these three qualifiers that Ben is going to use in the direct search. So now I brought up on the screen the search options. If you haven't seen the find help tool or visited it, this is um, a bit of um, the layout on the Choose Work website. First, we have the basic information, and you know, on that category, you know, since Ben is from Jackson Heights, it was really important to have somebody near him. He decided to go down under providing services and select in-person services and put in a zip code of 11372. Uh, so this is a New York area zip code. Um, and then he set the distance as 10 miles because he didn't want to go very far. Um, and then he selected, um, you know, the provider type because, um, you know, he's looking for an EN that can help him find work. And he's ready to define his work goals and do the steps needed to um, start applying. Um, so there he, he checks the box for employment network, but you can also um, uh, have in that category VR, WIPA, or PABS. So you have some flexibility there if you if you want the others. Um, next, under service pr pr services provided, remember he's looking for employment services, Ben selects direct employment, uh, job placement assistance, and direct job placement. Ben does not select career prep services. You know, he's a bit beyond that at this point. And he does not select on the job services because he doesn't have those needs yet. He's waiting for that. Um, and he doesn't select any other services below. And on the right side, Ben selects mental impairments under the category population served, disability served. You know, other individuals could select hearing impairments or visual impairments uh, in the fourth category of other. Um, and he leaves the other areas blank. No specializations like young adults, veterans, uh, and he leaves languages blank as well. Like um, no, no need to qualify there for Ben. Um, so he's put all this data in and after doing that then he selects in the middle of the field update results. And on this next screen, we can see Ben's search results. And Ben looks at his options, they're sorted out by distance. Um, and then, you know, he can determine from these options which ones are right for him. Uh, on, on the screen here, we have um, Goodwill listed first, America Works next, The Bridge third, and then at the bottom one, a nice Jewish board of family and children. So there's four options that come up that are within 10 miles um, and they give a, a contact name, a phone number, an address, and an email address. And importantly for Ben, it even lists how close they are. And there's an EN that's two miles from Ben's home. Uh, so he can use this information to then reach out, perhaps through an email, 
um, open up to show more details of their options and then you know if you want to extra research Ben could maybe find a website and you know look up some more but this allows them to provide that that review of direct search gets me to ENs that are in my backyard now Ben at the same time decided well maybe I'll try a different approach and so he did the virtual services search and then this time he decided to meet virtually with the provider that can help him find self-employment and so he put in the find help tool he's looking for virtual career preparation services and again self-employment opportunities so ben decided in this search to try a different approach and he went inside and tagged ens vrs and WIPAs, and then of course virtual still put a zip code in but then said any distance from zip code under services provided Ben's trying self-employment, so he's not started it yet. So he selects all career prep services, career planning, job coaching, and resume writing, and then leaves those employment services and on-the-job services empty. Uh, under population served, he selects mental impairments with a check mark, and then for specialization, self-employment, because that's his objective and Ben selects the blue button update results and he gets his results um, and here Ben has completely different options right he has self-employment um, career prep services available through what appeared to be at least three ENs that serve virtually the first one being full circle second Abbott and Associates and third DL Kusky Ben also has contact name, phone numbers, and addresses along with an email address. And you'll notice that these one is 86 miles from him, another's uh, 400 something miles. So, but these are virtual services. And now he can contact them, interview them a little bit to see which is the right fit for him and ensure that the ENs can make sure that Ben is the right fit for them too. Um, now, if the direct search thing isn't right, again, remember you can contact the helpline and the helpline will assist in providing a generated service provider list that does the same thing the find help tool does, but you're talking to someone on the telephone and the, those beneficiary support specialists can generate and mail you a list that would do the same as the uh, find help tool results okay those are the virtual services and now we've come to our second q a so i'm going to ask pat to rejoin us and once again i apologize to everyone for our technical uh, break there pat thank you derek this is pat it, it scared me I, I was looking at my headset going it's broken it's broken where did he go i imagine everybody had a similar reaction um, somebody wanted to know uh, if they were using the find help tool, can they do it on the, on a smartphone? Does it have to be a computer? They can do it on a smartphone. The, this is Derek. They can do it on a smartphone. Um, it's mobile friendly, as they like to say, it was designed for different types of platforms. So you can use computer, you can use your smartphone. If you like to use, um, like the tablet or an iPad type thing, you can use one of those too. Thanks, Derek. Another question is, um, I don't think we touched on this one before, and it's, can a service provider help get the equipment I need to work? Can they get me a laptop or a phone or something like that? This is Derek. That's a really good question. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different providers that are out there, and so it's they they can help get the right tools to help you get the right work. Um, I think it's important to you know clarify through kind of the the ticket to work helpline how to go about doing that. So you can you know inquire like this is my need, and then they could provide some options that are there. And there's other great resource options too that are in the community. There's a lot of, um, of 
computer resources, including assistive technology resources that are funded through many states. So you, these um, service providers could also assist with pointing you in the right direction. Um, but you know, if you don't have the, the technology that you, know, you think you need, uh, there are options out there. What we suggest is starting um, because if you don't start, then somebody can't figure out how to help you. So um, you could uh, get in touch with the service provider and they're going to be able to help troubleshoot that. Thank you. Another one um, it has to do with working from home. Uh, he says, I live in the country and would like to work from home. Can service providers work with me on that? Thanks, Pat. This is Derek again. Yeah, some service providers provide those services across the nation virtually. Remember the the search with Ben for the virtual services on self-employment? Um, that very well you know, could be the example. There's other service providers in that team who specialize in really understanding the supports needed for people focused on remote work or work from home. So the answer is yes. It's finding that right match. So if we use the approach of how do I know which service provider is right for me? And then, you know, talk to the helpline about remote work, work from home options, and then the type of work you're looking to do. Uh, then, you know, the helpline team could generate a list of service providers that could provide virtual support for finding virtual work. And you could do what Ben did, go to the find help tool, check the boxes that fit your descriptions, and then look for remote work through those service providers as well. So a lot of options out there, and we know there's a lot more remote work available. So if that's your thing, highly encourage you to um, start your path to employment by connecting with one of the service providers. Thanks, Derek. It's Pat again. I, I remember when uh, you were doing your presentation, you talked about some ENs or service providers had benefits counselors. How do you find them? So yeah, if, this is Derek. If you're looking for an employment network specifically that has a benefits counselor, um, so there's there's fewer of those. But if it's a service provider with a benefits counselor in general, I recommend using the Find Help tool direct search. So you know you put in the required options, and then you get a results list, um, and in there you're going to see you know ENs that have benefits counselors. Um, you're also going to be able, of course, to get benefits counselors that are at the WIPAs, those um, community work incentives coordinators. So you can get a list that would be both. Um, you know, and again, like, you know, we say it a lot, but there's an option too, that if you don't like that tool, and you know, sometimes the internet's not easy to navigate for some folks, then you can call the helpline and the beneficiary support specialist would be able to help point you to um, benefits counselors uh, uh, that are service providers that can help you. There's that caveat in there, of course, like for some of them, that you have to be eligible right now for their services. So something to consider when asking the question. Thanks, Derek. It's Pat again. This is, this is a little different question is do i have to tell anyone if i start if i started working <laughs> say i this found a derek. job by myself Th this is derek yeah it sounds like somebody maybe could have started working and now they're asking that question it's an important one if you started working the important thing to do and you're receiving social security benefits ssi or ssdi um, it's important to update Social Security with your employment status and report your wages. So, I mean, we're not telling you, you know, you have to do it, but um, if you haven't started working yet, but when you do start working, then you need to update Social Security. So if you receive SSDI or SSI payments, you may be able to also report those wages, those earnings, 
that we're talking about through that my social security account so it's good to research you know what benefits am i receiving and then as you work you may be able to report your earnings or those wages through the online wage reporting service and um you know that application that you can get the my ssa account allows you to report so it's really important to think about that you can also if you receive ssi um SSI recipients or, you know, some approved others like spouses or parents or approved representatives um, can also report your wages. You could do it through a telephone or a mobile app as well. So for SSI um, and then um, with the telephone, you know, Social Security representatives can talk about rage reports as well. So there's some options. It, you know, you can call Social Security representatives to talk about that at 1 800 772 1213, or they have a TTY line that's 1 800 325 0778. So, a, a service provider like an EN, remember those on the job supports, can help you navigate all this. Like, when is the right way to report your wages or earnings? and when do you have to start doing that? So, I mean, like if you're asking that question and you just started working and you don't have an EN, well, that's a great benefit of having an EN because then they could help you create a calendar for all these activities. Um, we do not want you to go to a field office for like in-person reporting. We encourage you to report through that My SSA account or the mobile wage reporting for SSI or those social security telephone numbers that I gave you. So I hope that helps. It's a really important question. When you earn you, and you're on the benefits, SSI or SSDI, you need to start updating at social security with your employment status and reporting your wages. Very important information. Uh, Derek, I think we told people you know, a lot today if you were to make a recommendation for somebody who was interested, where would they start? What do they do next? Yeah, the, Pat, thanks for this. I know that it is a lot of information and it's one of the things that we hope shows that there's a broad and flexible team available for people to help them map out their next steps on their path and journey to work. Uh, I think the important part is I'd encourage you to take your next step and there is no exactly same and right step for everybody. Um, at the end of all of it, if you're unsure, then we really recommend that you visit the Choose Work website and, you know, explore that content and call the Ticket to Work helpline. I think when you have the team at the helpline talking to you, they're going to help determine Kind of, well, let's let's go in this direction because I hear you say that that's where you're at. You're you're in career preparation. An employment network could be a good option for you. Is that what I'm hearing? And then you verify that they could mail you a list of ENs. Um, but it's important to start where you're at, and we're not at the same places, but we all want the same destination. So the most important part is to begin and um, reach out to one to us one way or another, and we'll help get you to that right member of your employment team. Thanks, Derek. I think we've run out of time for questions. And I really want to thank you for providing all this information about the ticket program, the service providers, and how to find them. We've given Thanks, people Pat. a lot of information. Yeah, if you if you take away anything from this sub webinar, I hope it is that there are people that are ready and willing to help you and supports that can smooth your journey to work. Now, before we end the call, I'd like to take a couple minutes to share a little more information and resources with you. Now, we've talked probably a lot <laughs> about the Ticket to Work Helpline. The, the, the Helpline staff with highly trained support specialists 
who can give you the kind of personalized information that we can't provide on a national webinar. They can, they can deal with your individual situations and give you some, some guidance on that that we just can't provide you know, when we're talking to a large group because everybody's an individual. So the lines are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 8 Eastern time. And the number is 1-866-968-7842 or for TTY, 1-866-833-2967. You can visit the Ticket to Work website anytime at choosework.ssa.gov. And there you're going to find a lot more details about what we've covered today and more. You can also find us on social media. So you can subscribe to our blog or email updates by visiting https colon forward slash forward slash choosework.ssa.gov forward slash contact. This link is also in the web links pod that we've talked about before under Ticket to Work contact information. You can choose any way you want to connect with us. It's your choice. And what we encourage you to do is reach out to any of us, any of these ways, to explore a little bit more about how to begin your path to employment. Another exceptionally valuable resource is Social Security's Red Book. The Red Book is a comprehensive guide to all things related to employment supports that are available to people who receive SSDI and or SSI. We talked earlier about work incentives, the Red Book is a great resource for specific information about the many work incentives that are available. In addition to social media and email, another way to get information about the TICKET program is to opt in to receive our text messages. Just text TICKET, T-I-C-K-E-T, to 474747. Standard messaging rates may apply. You can opt out at any time. It's important to note that if you need to contact Social Security's Office of Employment Support, that's the office that manages the Ticket to Work program, please do it electronically instead of by postal mail. You can email us at support at choosework.ssa.gov. And just remember, please do not include any personally identifiable information in your email. We'd also like to have you join us for our next webinar, Ticket to Work for People with a Mental Illness. It will be on June 21st from 3 to 4.30 Eastern Time. Registration is now open at choosework.ssa.gov forward slash wise, or you can call the Ticket to Work helpline to register. Finally, you can help us plan future webinar topics and provide your feedback by taking our survey. A link's going to pop up after the webinar, or you can find the survey in the web links pod, or you can visit the Ticket to Work program at choosework.ssa.gov forward slash surveys forward slash wise. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time today to learn more about the program and the services and supports that are available to you. I hope you'll take advantage of some of them. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you so much.